gear reviews on YouTube are absolutely useless. That's something that was said recently in a Facebook group that I'm a member of. And it put an interesting debate. The person who proposed this, that um, all YouTube gear reviews were pointless, um, proposed that better reviews were user reviews in Facebook groups that are dedicated to the brand or the product. Now they're right, in my opinion, and they're wrong. Why they are right is if you've ever looked at your YouTube feed, particularly if you're somebody who goes to the subscription panel, which I would advise you should do, so you can make sure you're not missing videos that you actually want to see and you're helping to educate the algorithm about what you really want to see rather than its best guess at what you want to see. But that's the subject for another video, um, which I might have already made. You see some days when something is released, like a new lens or a new bit of gear, that your YouTube feed is just completely filled with reviews of that bit of gear. I call those day one reviews. Day one reviews are absolutely of no value to you whatsoever as a potential buyer. They might be of interest, to put the item on your radar, but for 99.9% .9 of the reviews of zero value whatsoever. The reason is the product maker has provided the item usually to the reviewer for free. They have often taken them to a resort or some fantastic venue in order to test the item. Those things in themselves don't make the review pointless. What does make the review pointless is They've been working with a pre-production copy of the item. They haven't had the item for very long. They've used the item in scenarios that are either being created for them or they've deliberately just gone out to try and test it in a very short time frame in order to get their video made, produced and released on the day of issue. So for my view, those videos are absolutely useless if you're trying to make a buying decision. They should be considered insights, first impressions, hmm, that's maybe on my radar for six months time, that sort of thing. Not, I need it, I'm gonna buy it now, and this is because somebody on YouTube said I should. Now on the other hand, there are other YouTube gear reviews. You'll notice in my personal reviews, that you'll often see the words long-term. Not always, I have reviewed things that I haven't had very long before, after I've given them some rigorous testing. Um, usually testing them because I was wanting to say if I was gonna keep it off, I was gonna send it back. But if you look for the words long-term in reviews, you should know that the photographer, videographer, whatever, has been using that gear day in, day out for an extended period of time. Those reviews have much more value, in my opinion, because they've lived with it. They've edited lots of shoots from it. They haven't put it through pre-prescribed scenarios. They've tested things properly. Now this doesn't mean that if you wait six months after the new lens that you were interested in comes out and then you search for a review and there's a new review posted two days ago by some YouTuber, that that review is going to be any better than the day one reviews because you don't know how long they've had the lens for, for example. If they say how long they've had it for, they talk about that and that obviously adds some substance to the review. But for example, I know I could grow this channel much faster if every Saturday I rented a new lens from some local lens rental place or online rental place i spent a week playing with it the following saturday i made a video about it and got the next lens did the same thing and constantly reposted gear reviews i would grow this channel much faster would i know much about those lenses i'd know more than if i hadn't used them for a week but i certainly wouldn't know as much as i know about the lenses that i use all the time that are part of my kit that i've laid down my money for that I used in numerous different scenarios. So when evaluating whether a review is any good or whether it's of substance, I would personally urge you to listen to what the reviewer says and try and establish if this is their gear that they've been using for a long time, or if this is just something that they have on test. If it's on test, take everything with a pinch of salt. So on the other hand, the guy in the Facebook group was saying that user reviews in specific brand groups are much more useful. I would argue that actually they're not. Some of them are, but some of them are just as flawed as day one YouTube reviews. Now, there's a psychological phenomenon known as bias confirmation bias. Basically what this is, and I'm sure if you YouTube search it, you'll find lots of videos on it, but basically if you spent six months researching the best 50 millimeter lens to buy for your Sony A7 III, so you've made that purchase, you will be psychologically geared towards always saying that that lens is good, ignoring its flaws, ignoring its faults, because 
you've invested your energy, your time, your research into deciding to buy that lens in the first place. And therefore, to say there's anything wrong with that lens or that you wish you'd gone with XYZ lens is to say you made a mistake, that your own research was flawed. And as humans, we have trouble admitting our mistakes. So this isn't something you're consciously thinking about. This is just being a human being. So people who are in brand groups or or writing about specific products or product group, they tend to have invested themselves in that decision. And therefore it's very hard for them to criticize it. So positive reviews of gear in those groups should always be taken with a pinch of salt. Now that's not to say these groups don't have value because negative reviews in those groups, apart from the ones that just clearly haven't got a clue what they're doing with the gear and are just chucking their toys at the pram. Um, those people have actually overcome their own bias, confirmation bias and recognize the problem with the item. Those have real value. Brand-based groups obviously attract fanboys and stuff, but if you're using something and you want to know how to use it better, there's nothing better than those groups because the people who are using them will know the items intimately and will know how to use them. So what's your take on it? Do you think YouTube gear reviews have any value whatsoever? Or do you agree with me that longer term reviews are valuable? Anyway, look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.